Now you think you know what your lawn's going to look like if you do X, Y, and Z. But do you know what it's going to look like when you don't do all those things? Well, today on Budget Lawns, I'm going to show you what mine looks like with very, and I'm talking very, little effort so far this season. Hey, appreciate you joining me here on the channel as always. I appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much. Because of you, I'm able to make these videos and uh, make budget lawns keep trucking down the tracks. If you find this video helpful, entertaining, even in the slightest bit, give me a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe if you haven't already. It's the basics in lawn care that really, really matter. Mowing, watering, fertilizing, a little bit of weed control. But what happens if you kind of sort of do those things, maybe not quite as much as you should. Well, that's uh, been me this summer because my backyard, it got its overhaul last year and hasn't gotten a whole lot of attention this year because the front yard got its makeover this year and took priority over everything else. But with all that said, with as little as I've done in the back lawn, does it still even look worth a darn? You darn right it does. Let's go take a look. Hey, uh, before we head to the backyard, let me show you some of the progress going on in the front yard. I just got a uh, cut in. And with this new sod, it always gets worse before it gets better. You know, you don't mow it the first couple weeks, so it gets nice and lush and dark green. But then as you slowly work your height of cut down, it starts to turn a little bit brown. It doesn't look quite as beautiful as it once did but that's just kind of the nature of the beast i don't want to bring the height of cut all the way down at once so every time i mow every couple days i'm just barely just a pinch bringing that blade down and before you know it i'll get my height of cut set around an inch and a quarter inch and a half and then we'll start manually real mowing this thing for the time being though we just got to let the, all these brown stalks get the green back on them it's just all part of the process. You gotta trust the process. Now, moving into the backyard, this, is, uh, this has become my favorite view in the lawn. You open this gate and this is where I did my huge project last year. Now everything just kind of flows nicely together. Of course, when this all greens up, it'll look a whole heck of a lot better, but very pleased this being only the second season in this lawn with how much progress we've made there's been a lot of physical labor involved for these major projects, but when it comes to actually taking care of the turf, not really a whole lot has been done at all. Backyard, for as little as attention as it has gotten, looks pretty freaking awesome. No soil test back here, folks. None. Have not used a weed killer on this grass. Not once in the first two seasons. Being rotary mode with the old Troy built TB130. I mean, is there much to complain about? Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. Now, you're going to have people that say, oh, well, it's obvious you haven't done a lot of these things because it really doesn't look all that good. It really doesn't look all that good at all. And to them, I would say, that's your opinion. Because really, in the big grand scheme of things, you have to determine what your expectations for your lawn are. Who cares what everybody else thinks it should look like? Of course, people are going to give you hell if it's not 100% perfectly green and weed-free. If it doesn't look like a golf course like everyone else for some reason wants theirs to look like. I mean, if you ask me if I've got three qualities about my lawn and I can only choose two of them out of the three, it's all right with me. Those three qualities being, hey, look, I want it to be nice and thick, right? Really, really thick, almost like carpet. Second one, I want it to be almost weed-free, not, not entirely weed-free. That's a huge ask of any lawn, but pretty much weed-free is good enough for me. And the third one just doesn't matter as much to me anymore, and that is color. Am I really concerned about it being this darkest of dark green lawns? Absolutely not. As long as it's thick, carpety for my kids to play on and us to enjoy as a family, and as long as it's relatively weed-free, which is a whole lot more enjoyable than a lawn full of weeds, 
I really couldn't care less about how dark green it is. Now, why do I say that? Because one way you really get a dark green lawn is applying fertilizers to it and other supplements to really bring out that green color in the grass blades. And I am just not going to do that. I've only applied one round of fertilizer so far this season, and that was all the way back in the middle of May. By now, I should have had one down in May, June, and July. So I'm way behind all that. And I tell you, because you can see that even without throwing a bunch of MPK all over the lawn, it's still looking pretty darn good. It's meeting my expectations, and that's really all that matters. Now, the grass probably could use another round of fertilizer, but I've been holding off until the new sod up front's ready for its first application. But back here, I could tell it needs some by these dark green spots kind of scattered all throughout, surrounded by some lighter shades of green. The dark green spots are from where the dog has taken a leak. Dog pee has urea nitrogen in it, and that will result in kind of a boost of growth and green color. So that's usually a good indication you're due for some nitrogen. If it's properly fertilized, usually I'll end up with some uh, burning spots where the dog pees as opposed to nice looking green spots like we're seeing right now. And upon further inspection, look, I told you I'm okay being relatively weed free. That means I've got some. We've got some clover spread throughout the lawn. We've also got some crabgrass, very little crabgrass. So last year we had crabgrass all along the back side of this wall. Most of that has gotten taken care of. And I'm really thick right now. The lawn is super, super thick. Now I haven't leveled, so I'm getting some scalping in spots. But overall, I mean, for a rotary cut Bermuda grass lawn with a sharp blade, that doesn't look too bad. I'm mowing just a little bit lower on the bottom side of the wall because it's not quite as uneven as it is up here. But even up here, I mean, come on. It's thick. It's relatively weed free. It's got a nice color green. What else could I ask for? I mean, it's beautiful. So to get to this point without much fertilizer, what have I done if I haven't done much at all? It's pretty simple. We can harp on this till we're blue in the face and sound like a broken record. I've just been mowing. Sharp blade cutting this thing every three to four days. Now that I'm cutting the front yard every two days to lower the height of cut, heck, if I, if I feel like it, I come back here and just run over it with one pass real fast because that's how important mowing is to getting that grass to fill in and be nice and thick. And when it's nice and thick, it chokes out weeds. So you don't have to worry about much in the way of weed killers. Sure, I did apply a pre-emergent earlier this spring, but that was all the way back in February. And I'm still relatively weed free because the mowing is taking care of that for me. Well, what about water? Are you getting that inch of water a week? We have had, for the most part, a very hot and dry summer like most of you have. And I would say I've probably gotten the sprinklers out on this back lawn a handful of times at most, four, five, six times. We did get some rain last week, so that helped it bounce back really, really nicely. But I've been spending a fortune in the front lawn to keep that sod alive during this dry, hot weather and putting sprinklers out in the backyard and cranking up that water bill even more just hasn't been on the top of my mind. So if you're just mowing, you're helping prevent weeds, you're getting a nice thick green lawn, a little bit of fertilizer will give you the color that you need as you can obviously see. Get some water. Doesn't, doesn't really take a whole lot. And even if you don't get much on it, I promise you that if it starts to go brown and a little bit dormant, it's not dead. Once you get some rainfall or decide to throw the sprinklers out, it will bounce back for you in no time. Don't overcomplicate this. Quit, 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 quit making it out to be everything that all these folks online are saying. Mow it, water it, fertilize it a little bit take care of some weeds I mean 
Have I proven any points? All right, my friends, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Budget Lawns. Hey, just one word of advice. If they're making it more complicated than it really is, they've probably got something to sell. Also, let me know in the comments below if you like these more walk and talk in the lawn style videos, and we'll do more of them. I want to give you what you want. And hey, but I do want you to join me and Joe from Waterboard Productions on Tuesday nights, nine o'clock Eastern time, eight central, right here on Budget Lawns for the Budget Water Show. We would love to have you join the conversation. But until then, or the next video, I hope you have a good one. Take care, we'll see you soon.